About two years ago, I rented a room in a three-bedroom house. The walls were very thin. My bedroom had one window, which led into the living room, none with outside access. This window will be important later on. There was three bedrooms, one for me, one for the master tenant, and one spare, which at the time was rented out by a pretty friendly guy. Well, friendly guy had issues with his work visa and had to move back to Canada last minute, leaving us about two weeks to find another roommate. Our quickest and easiest option was Craigslist. Due to my work schedule, I had no part in the selection process, but I was content when the new roommate moved in a bit later. Something was off about this guy, but he seemed friendly enough. He was a very tall, large man and was very quiet. Not somebody who I wanted to go out of my way to hang out with, but was still okay to be around. Two weeks after he moved in, the master tenant left for Hawaii, leaving me and the new tenant alone. For the first few days, things were normal. However, that all changed one night. I was woken up at about 8 a.m. to a frantic knocking on my door. The new roommate, we'll call him Kyle, was standing there when I opened up, looking frazzled. He looks me dead in the eye and asks, So do you want to tell me what was going on last night? To which I was shocked and confused. Last night I had come home from work at about 9pm and immediately showered and went to bed. I explained this to him and he says that he heard me screaming, that he saw me through the window, arguing with our landlord, who I had never met in person at this point. He claimed that he heard people coming in and out of our house. I tell him no way. None of that ever happened. After staring at me for a bit longer, he leaves. The next morning I wake up to the same thing. This time he says he saw me arguing with my boyfriend. I was single at the time. He said that he saw me talking with the master tenant, who as I mentioned before was in Hawaii. He also asked me for the badge number of the officer I was talking to. Apparently he saw a bunch of police as well. This time I get angry, and I more or less tell him to cut this shit out. I'm not doing anything, and I have no idea what you're talking about. He got this weird look on his face and said I think I had a seizure in my sleep next time that happens call the ambulance after that he left but about an hour later he begins knocking at my door again when I open up Kyle repeats the same exact story verbatim I tell him to leave me alone and then I left for work my workday went about as expected. I'm a bit reluctant to return home, but I was too tired to crash at somebody else's place. Big mistake. At about 1 a.m., I wake up to door slamming. Kyle is pacing back and forth between his bedroom and the living room, then to the front door, walking in and out of each room, turning the lights on and off mumbling angrily to himself. I can see his shadow pacing back and forth through the frosted window in my room. Since my room is dark, he can't see inside. Suddenly he screams. I can't live like this anymore. Why are you doing this to me? I thought he was on the phone, so I didn't respond. A few moments later, he screams my name. I then realized his statements were directed at me. I knew I had to get out of there. So I quietly crept out of bed and start getting dressed, packing up bags of clothes for work in the morning. I'm almost done when he screams. I can hear you. He then charges over to my room, slapping the wall next to my door, but not touching the door itself. I look toward my window 
and I see his shadow lean all the way forward, pressing his ear against the glass. I was fucking terrified, and I sat completely still, not moving a muscle. He eventually screams my name again and moves away from the window. I hear him start pacing between rooms again. Now my shoes are kept on a rack outside my door and not inside my room, so I know that when I leave, I'm going to need a moment to put them on. I decided to wait until he was back in his room, at which time I plan to grab my shoes, put them on, and run. As I'm formulating this plan, the pacing stops. He then screams. Do you want to fight about this? Come on out right now, and we'll fight, I swear to God. Now, I am a very small girl, and only five feet tall. This guy is easily three times my size, so I'm definitely not looking to fight. After a few minutes, he turns off all the lights, and I hear the door to his room open and close. followed by silence. I wait for a moment to be sure I can't hear any movement, and then I decided to take my chance. I took a breath and opened my door quickly, then stepped out and grabbed my shoes, before looking up a second later to see him standing there in the dark hallway with nothing but a pair of boxers and socks on. He then spoke in a low, calm voice. Ma'am, we need to talk. That was a hard no from me, so I grabbed my shoes and ran out the front door with them in hand. I ran about half a block barefoot before stopping and putting them on. When I looked behind me, I saw him standing in the porch light of our front door, watching me run, but not moving. Luckily for me, I had a friend who lived about two blocks away, and I had their spare key on me. So I let myself in and crashed there for the night, and that's where I stayed for the next week, while we worked things out with our landlord. Kyle agreed to move out within the week. He said he didn't remember anything that happened, and wasn't sure if it was real or not. But if I said that's what went down, then it must be true. The day Kyle left, he sent me a photo of the house keys sitting on the table along with a message that said, I'm out. I take a friend over there with me to scout it out, and to make sure he actually left. When we got there, we discovered that not only did he leave a bunch of food and furniture behind, but he had ripped out all the fire alarms from the ceiling, and had unscrewed and removed the deadbolt from the front door, and left them lined up neatly on the front table. The door to my bedroom can only be locked by using a key from the outside, and had been locked when we arrived, which meant that Kyle still had a key to my room. We called the locksmith right away. Even after the locks were changed, I was still terrified to stay there alone, and never went to sleep at night without barricading the doors with chairs and other furniture. To this day I still fear for his safety. He obviously had some kind of psychological condition, but I also wonder what could have happened to me if I hadn't been as lucky as I was. A few weeks ago, I had to fly out to a small town I had never been to in order to look for a place to live. I'm moving there in the fall to start grad school. My boyfriend flew with me, before the trip, I researched all sorts of apartments on Craigslist and set up a bunch of appointments. Our first appointment was in the afternoon, in this sort of remote residential area. The landlord sounded fine over email and asked me to call him about an hour before the appointment to confirm that I was still coming. I called, but he didn't answer. So my boyfriend and I started walking to the house and just hoped that he would show up. About 10 minutes before the appointment, the guy calls me. Hey, are you coming? He sounded like an older man, 
and had this very strange, slow way of talking. But I just thought he was older. Yes, we're in front of the house now. He then got extremely upset. We? Oh, yeah. My boyfriend's with me. You never told me you had a boyfriend. You never said that. It had never crossed my mind to tell him this information, since my boyfriend would not be coming to live with me. He was just helping me look for apartments on the trip. I told the man, and after a very long pause, he said, I'm sorry. It's just... Sometimes, people don't tell me when they're married, and it surprises me. I'll see you soon. He then hung up. I told my boyfriend about what the man said, and he was immediately weirded out. He wanted to leave. But there were slim pickings in terms of real estate. So I, stupidly, said that we had to stay, in case this was the place. As we were discussing this, we see a man leave the house we were going to view. This man was young, and extremely sketchy looking. He took one look at us, and ran to his car, and pulled away from the curb with a screech. Okay, so now we're really starting to get creeped out. But this isn't enough for us to just bail. Yet. Me and my boyfriend looked at each other, wondering what to do. Soon, the landlord arrives. He looked to be in his 50s, very tall and strong looking. His eyes were completely blank and devoid of emotion. He slowly walks up to us and says, I would shake your hands, but mine are dirty. Where from? My boyfriend asks. Work. He flatly responds. He then asks me a lot of questions, completely ignoring my boyfriend. What am I going to school for? What other places am I considering for living? Is my boyfriend moving to this town as well? The entire time, he stares into my eyes without blinking. I try to give him answers that are as vague as possible. Meanwhile, my boyfriend is asking the landlord the same kind of questions, which he refuses to answer any of them. He then says out of nowhere, Let me show you the basement. At this point, we really should have left, but we didn't. I kept thinking that this was an eccentric old man from a small town, and we're city folk, and he was just feeling paranoid. My boyfriend, on the other hand, wanted to get out of there, but he followed us, as the man led us to the back of the house, away from the street, to this sort of detached shed. He opened the door, and we saw that there were stairs leading down into utter darkness. He flipped the switch at the top of the stairs, and the light did not turn on. Normally, the response for this would be, Oh shit, the light's out, or something like that. But he just says, mm. And slowly, walked down into the darkness. He then just stood there, without moving, in the dark, then said, Aren't you coming down? Uh, there's nothing to see if the light's out, says my boyfriend. The landlord just stands there for a long time, then slowly walks back up the stairs and closes the basement door without saying anything. He took us into the house. Weird and increasingly creepy things ensued. The front door, the only exit to the house, locked automatically. When my boyfriend tried to fiddle with it, the man became very upset and told him to leave it alone. He managed to get it open secretly though. The man kept trying to box us into small rooms and kept reaching his hands into his pockets, only to take them away when he caught us looking. On Craigslist and in person, the man claimed that there was a grad student already living in the house, but the evidence of that seemed arranged. There were neat piles of generic textbooks on the table. 
but not things a 20-something-year-old might read. There was a bowl of fruit on the table, but there was no other food in the fridge or pantry, or even utensils. There were maybe three t-shirts in the closet, and the landlord couldn't say what school he went to or how long he had been renting the house. Finally, the man had showed us every single room except for one. He claimed that the one he refused to open for us was just the attic, and we didn't need to see anything up there. He gave us several reasons when we inquired. It was unfinished. There was furniture up there. It would smell bad. The last one I believed, because when I stood near the door, it smelled terrible. After a while, we made our excuses and got out of there. The man walked us out, then got into his car, but when he thought we had turned the corner, he exited his car and slowly sauntered back into the house. My boyfriend, fixated on the idea that there was something off about this guy, googled him that night. We found out three things. That he was a pillar of the community, known by a lot of the townspeople. There was no evidence of him owning or managing real estate, as he claimed on Craigslist. And that he had listed his home address as the very house we had been touring. So that was definitely the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. This was the first and only time I ever used Craigslist. It was about five years ago. In the springtime, when the snow was all melted and the grass was starting to grow long again, I went to my garage to get the lawnmower. I had an old push mower and it hadn't been used in months. When I wheeled it out of my garage, it wouldn't start. I couldn't figure out the problem and after researching online with no luck, I realized I probably needed to buy a new one. The one I had was really old anyways and it had had some problems in the past. My yard is not all that big, so I only needed another push mower, and I figured they wouldn't be too expensive to buy a used one. I went to Craigslist and searched in my local area for lawn mowers. After browsing for a little while, I found one that seemed to be the best deal. It was $100, and it seemed like a reasonable price to me. After some thought, I decided to reach out and let the seller know that I was interested in buying it. I texted the number that was on the listing and received a response about an hour later. The response said that if I wanted to buy the mower, I could come by and purchase it tomorrow night. I agreed, and I was then provided with an address and a time to pick it up, which was 8 p.m. This was a little later than I would have liked, but I agreed. The next night, I drove my small SUV to the address that I was sent, and I texted the seller letting them know that I was on my way. I got a text back saying, Sounds good, the mower's in the garage. Come right in. It took me almost 20 minutes to get there, and it was a little bit farther than I wanted. When I arrived, it seemed to be a pretty typical residential neighborhood. There were a bunch of houses along both sides of the street. I saw the address of the house that I was going to. The garage door was open, and I parked my car on the side of the street. I texted the seller that I had arrived. I waited in my car until I got a response. It took about a minute, but the seller said, Come on up. I got out of my car, walked across the street, and then up the driveway. When I got inside the garage, it was not very well lit. There was just a dim light bulb in the middle. I looked around and there was miscellaneous stuff that you would typically find in a garage, but there was no lawnmower. I took a few more steps in and called out, Hey, I'm here. I didn't hear anything. I saw the normal step up to the door leading to the house, but then I saw another door. It was in the far back right corner, and this was a door that was open and seemingly leading into another hallway. I saw a piece of a cardboard box was propped up against the door, and written in marker it said, Lawnmower, and then had an arrow pointing inside the door. I was a little confused by this, and it seemed a little bit sketchy, but I walked over to it. When I got to the doorway, things were pretty dark, and I couldn't see well, but I did see that there was a door to the right and then a staircase going straight down to seemingly a basement. The arrow was pointing down the stairs, so maybe this guy had his lawnmower in the basement for some reason. I started walking down the stairs to the basement area. When I made it to the bottom of the stairs, I could now see that the entire basement appeared to be unfinished, and the lighting wasn't much better in there either. Still, I didn't see a lawnmower. Then, I heard noise coming from up the stairs. It was the door from the garage leading to the basement, and it was closing. It wasn't slammed or anything. It was closed relatively quietly, but I still heard it. I looked up the staircase, but didn't see anybody. 
Whoever had closed the door closed it from the outside. I suddenly had a really bad feeling, and I just wanted to leave. I walked back up the stairs as quickly as I could. As I was making it to the top of the stairs, I heard another door close, and then footsteps. Somebody else was in the house. It sounded like they had gone in the other door leading from the garage. I tried opening the door to the garage, but it was somehow locked from the outside. I couldn't open it. Then, I tried the other door leading to inside the house. That one was already open a crack. When I made it inside the rest of the house, I saw that I was in some sort of hallway. It was small and led to a living room type of area that had a sliding glass door that went out to a back patio. I heard footsteps approaching from another room around the corner. Without hesitating, I went to the sliding glass door and opened it. Once outside, I shut it behind me, just in time to see a man coming into view inside the house. I didn't get a good look at him at all, but he was walking in my direction at a rather fast speed. I bolted out of there, sprinting all the way from the backyard to around the house and garage and all the way back to my car. When I made it inside my vehicle, I started the engine and immediately left. I drove all the way back home, and then I blocked the number just because I didn't want anything to do with that guy. I reported my experience on the Craigslist website and then decided to buy a new lawnmower from the store. Since then, I haven't used Craigslist. I'm not sure if I'll use it again sometime. Maybe things have changed. All I know is, I will never forget that experience I had, and I hope to never have one like that again. Last year, I broke my leg and was unable to do a lot of things that I typically do. I live alone in a smaller house, and my friends and family were really nice in helping me out when I first got the crutches. Soon after, though, I realized that I would have to do yard work, and I didn't want to ask family or friends to do it. Everybody in my neighborhood takes great pride in their yards. The lawns are all very green and trimmed often. There's generally nice flowers in most as well. I have a typical garden, just some basic flowers by the house, and then most of my front yard is just grass that I cut weekly. I decided to go on Craigslist to find somebody to keep up my yard for a few weeks until I would be able to again. There was only three weeks until I would be able to do yard work, and I didn't want to hire a company because I knew that would be really expensive. I found an ad on Craigslist that said, Male, just graduated from high school, looking to earn money doing odd jobs during summer. He even listed yard work in the ad, and I figured this would be a good person to go with. I contacted the kid, whose name was Michael. He responded, saying that he was excited to have a job for a few weeks, and I told him he would come over once a week. The job would be cutting the grass and watering the flowers, also cutting down weeds if there were any, and picking up sticks in the yard. Probably would only take an hour or two each week. The next week, Michael arrived at my house, and I went outside to greet him. Right away, though, things seemed strange. Michael did not appear to be in high school at all. He had a full beard for starters, and I know some high schoolers can grow full beards, but he just didn't look 18 or 19 more like 29 or 30. Right away, I said to Michael that I thought he said he had just graduated high school. He looked confused for a moment and then said that he looks a little older than he actually is. He admitted that he hadn't just graduated, but claimed he forgot to change his ad for a few years. More like 10 years, I thought. Still, he looked capable of doing the work and he was already here, so I gave him the information that he needed and he started working. I went inside and went over some work stuff. I was working part-time at home and part-time in the office at the time. Occasionally, I would glance out the window to see what Michael was doing. The first day went pretty well. He did all of the maintenance work in about an hour, and then I paid him, and he left. The next week was a bit different. There was the same amount of work to be done, if not less, but he was there for almost three hours. I wasn't quite sure why he took so long, because I wasn't paying him by the hour. But finally, he finished, I paid him, and he left. The next week, which was the last one, he was there for a lengthy amount of time again, and this time, I noticed him poking around some of the windows and areas of my house from the outside. I really didn't know what he was doing. Cleaning the windows was not part of the job. That's seemingly what he was doing though. I was careful not to let him notice me when I watched him work, but seeing this was a little confusing. At last, he was done, and I paid him for the final time, and he left. I was glad to be done working with Michael. He was a little strange and definitely misrepresented himself. But that same night, at about midnight, I was still awake and on my phone in my bedroom. I'm a bit of a night owl and I frequently stay up past midnight. I heard the sound of a window opening at the opposite end of my house. Immediately, I knew it was happening. I just knew it had to be Michael. Looking back, I could have been wrong, but I had more than a hunch. I didn't know what he wanted or what he was trying to do, but when I suddenly heard footsteps coming into the house, I knew I had to do something. 
I stepped out into my hallway, just a couple of steps. Then, I shouted as loud as I could that I knew it was Michael and I had a gun. I didn't have a gun, but I wanted to scare him off. It actually worked, and I heard footsteps moving back until I heard noises around the window again. I left my room and walked into the living room to see an open window. I went to the front of my house and saw what sure enough appeared to be Michael running out of the front yard and onto the street. I made sure that all my windows and doors were closed, then I went back to bed. The next day, I went to the police with all of my information. It was not difficult at all for them to find Michael because his ad was still on Craigslist. I'm glad I was awake that night when he tried breaking in, or I'm not sure what would have happened. Do you know how they say that hindsight is 2020? Well, looking back on that day, the more I think about what happened, all of the signs were there from the beginning. It was 2006. I had just turned 24 and finally got in a home for myself. It wasn't anything fancy, just a small one bedroom home, but it was a home and I was proud of it. I had just graduated from college and landed a solid job at a small accounting firm. So I finally had a way to earn some money. That being said, I was still in the process of saving up. So at the time, I was essentially living paycheck to paycheck, like most people. In order to make a little bit of extra money, I was in the process of selling things that I didn't need anymore, a lot of which was being sold over Craigslist. I had managed to sell a few cheap paintings and piece of furniture that I owned on the site, so I figured it was a good place to start. I posted a few items, and it wasn't long before I had a response. Someone had emailed me about buying an old cell phone, and as luck would have it, they were able to meet that day. I didn't like the idea of meeting at my house or at their house, so I asked if they would mind meeting at a local diner. He agreed, and we were set up to meet later that day. The time came and I grabbed the phone and his charger, got in my car, and made the 15 minute drive to the diner. As I pulled in, I noticed that it wasn't as full as I expected it to be, which was nice, and I didn't think anything of it at first. But the more I tell this story, the more I realize that I noticed a white Ford Taurus parked next to a red Chevy Impala. As I said, I didn't think anything was strange about it at the time. I pulled into a parking spot that was close to the door, and I texted the buyer to let him know that I was there. He said he would be at the diner in a few minutes, so I just turned on some music and waited. After a few moments, a white Ford Taurus pulls into the spot next to me, and me and the buyer made the exchange. Everything went fine. We both said thank you and headed our separate ways. As I made my way home though, I noticed something odd. I had made a few turns along the way, and I could swear that I was being followed by a red car. Again, I made no connection to the car in the parking lot. As I got closer to my house, I grew more and more concerned that something was wrong. However, one intersection away from my house, I noticed the car turned down one of the side roads. I was relieved to make it home, safe and sound. I made my way into the house and made sure to lock the door behind me. I threw some leftovers into the microwave and got ready to settle down for the night. After dinner, I hopped into the shower and began to get ready for bed. I would have gone to sleep as if nothing was wrong had I not remembered that I left the curtains to the living room open. I don't like the idea of someone being able to see inside my house, so I went to close them. I paused when I got to the window though because I could have sworn I saw something in the road. It was at that moment I realized that I was looking at a car that had parked at the end of my driveway. I froze. My first instinct was to look to the door, and it was still locked, thankfully. I then quickly made my way over to the light switch to the front porch, and I could see the car as clear as day. It was the red car that had been following me, a red Chevy Impala. To my horror, the car was empty. I didn't know how many people there were, or where they were, but someone was outside my house for some reason. I pulled my phone out and quickly called the police. 
I explained to the 911 operator what the issue was and they assured me that someone was on the way and asked me to stay on the line. That was when I heard them, the sound of multiple people walking along my porch. I turned out my light, but it didn't scare them away. I tried to poke my head around the corner to the window without being seen, hoping that I could catch a glimpse of who was outside. To my horror, one of the men was standing with his covered face pressed against the glass trying to look inside. As soon as my head came around the corner, we made eye contact. He didn't move at first. All I could think to do was to say, Police are coming. You better get out of here right now. I tried to sound stern, but I honestly probably sounded like a sniveling child. It was like clockwork, though. And almost right after I finished my sentence, I could see the flashing lights coming down the road. The dispatcher wasn't lying. Someone was actually right down the road. The men noticed the lights and took off to their car, but they didn't make it in time. The police were in the driveway and the three men were taken into custody. I recognized one of them as the man who was driving the white Ford Taurus. The police said, this sort of thing happens all of the time.